Hi, I'm Craig Sigal, creator of six mental game programs for golfers sold worldwide. And I'm also the author of 52 ways to lower your golf score without practice. Now, in this video training series, I'm going to teach you how to bring your best practice game over to the course. Now, this video has four powerful lessons you need to begin this process. Choking under pressure is by far the biggest problem in golf that even the best pros in the world struggle with, let alone weekend players and beginners. It often shows up as the yips, putting, chipping, and even full swing. It shows up as blow-ups on your scorecard, right in the midst of playing great rounds. It's sometimes called transference and other times called performance anxiety. Now I'm going to give you the real reason why you struggle with this and the formula for how to eliminate this problem. This is very doable and I've worked with countless golfers and other athletes all over the world for it with great success. Now if you're a total beginner, this training may not be for you and you probably should spend more time learning the basics and the fundamentals. But if you've ever had a string of four holes or more, when you played awesome, then it wasn't a fluke. And you have the necessary skills to make this training work for you. I personally struggled for years with this. I remember very distinctly playing in a company scramble tournament and not being able to calm my body down on those shots my team was totally counting on me. You know, like when you're the last one to hit. My easy, fluid range game that I had just 30 minutes ago was totally gone. Once I cracked the code for how to overcome this, that's when I broke 80 my first time on a championship course. It's like this big wall, you know, and when I crushed that wall, my entire game just came alive. What I'm about to teach you here is the foundation for everything I've done in my career as a mental game trainer and single digit handicapped golfer. Not only that, but my entire life broke open to possibility and opportunity as I overcame this most basic of human emotions, which is what this training is all about, fear. I've since worked with hundreds of golfers and other athletes in person for this issue to refine all my strategies and tactics to be able to present it to you here now, and I'm very proud about this. I just can't begin to tell you how much this jolt of confidence did for my life as well as my game, and I want that for you. I actually went on to be featured on NBC TV, the front page of the Seattle Post Intelligence or Sports section, <laughs> numerous radio shows, and, and I have countless testimonials since the success of my methods. But enough about me. Let's get to actually learning something here. Lesson one. This is not a swing problem. The first thing you need to understand in order to have your own personal breakthrough is that you are not gonna fix this problem by working on your swing. Get that out of your head right now. So here's proof. Do you happen to catch that show called The Hank Haney Project? Where one of uh, golf's supp supposedly best swing instructors on the whole planet, who by the way coached Tiger Woods himself, he tried to help out Charles Barkley. He worked with him for months and could not fix the problem. Here's a quote from an interview with Haney. Interviewer says, that was the weird thing about Barkley. You did fix him. On the range and on the simulator, he had 300 yard drives and he couldn't take it to the course. He had the mental full swing yips and you had him killing it. Haney, yeah, the change was that before he couldn't do it on the range. Now he can do it on the range, but still can't do it on the course. So he's playing left-handed now. He's actually pretty good, Haney goes on to say. It's bizarre that a professional athlete wouldn't be physically able to do it. He's physically able to, he isn't mentally able to. It's bizarre when somebody shoots less than 50% from the foul line. It's bizarre when Chuck Knobloch can't throw at the first base. It's bizarre when Rick Ankiel throws 18 pitches in a row to the backstop. But it happens. Now, me, it's bizarre when a top golf pro doesn't get it that it's not a swing problem. The interviewer says, so Barkley's in that club? Haney, yeah. So here's the final result of all that work as filmed by a fan at the 2009 Regents Charity Classic Pro-Am after working with Haney. So 
so you see, the best instructors on the planet have no answers. You're gonna know more than Hank Haney about this problem when we're done here, but you need to get out of that swing fix mentality. This is a completely mental and emotional issue and all the drills in the world won't do a thing for you if this is your issue. You know you have the issue if you can swing or putt great in practice but not on the course or not under competitive pressure. Lesson two, you must understand what causes this problem and how you operate in order to buy into the fix. So here we go, A, you have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. Your conscious mind is what you're using right now to look, listen, learn, understand, reason, reject, judge, and make decisions. Your unconscious mind, on the other hand, is that part of you that simply runs your body. It takes care of all the automatic functions of you that you don't have to think about, like breathing and heartbeat and digestion and circulation, your immune system, etc and it uses the nervous system and the chemicals of emotion to get you to do the things it needs you to do to keep your body alive and running. Now we'll explain that more later, but the bottom line is, at the core of things, that this problem originates at that unconscious level. You can't think your way out of it, and you can't drill your way out of it like Hank Haney discovered, along with the Mayo Clinic. Did you know that the famous Mayo Clinic has studied the yips and couldn't find out the answers either? Go ahead and Google it and read what they came up with. It's hilarious. It's because they're all looking in the wrong places. B, part B of this, the unconscious or the subconscious, if you prefer that term, it's the same thing. The unconscious mind causes this problem primarily for two reasons. One, at its lighter levels, and forms, it's a natural response to gear you up for battle, to win or protect your something that you value. It's an old program passed down from our ancestors to fight off lions and tigers or, or warriors laying siege to the city. Your unconscious mind truly does not know the difference between that kind of danger and the threat of you not reaching your golf goal for the day. That's it. Now when it progresses over time, it becomes something like the yips where there's involuntary jerking and yipping like Barkley on the full swing. That's your unconscious mind injecting these movements into your game in order to try to get you to quit playing the game. Now why would it do that? The simple answer is stress. Did you know that 90% of all doctor visits these days in Western societies are due to stress-related illness? Stress is the arch enemy of the unconscious mind. You see, it can't properly operate your body under stress, and keeping your body alive is all it cares about. You stop the stress when you know, you're playing a friendly round where you don't score or on the range, and the unconscious mind doesn't need to interfere with it using the yips because there's no stress. Lesson three, stress is a choice. Stress doesn't happen to you, you create it. It's all about how you look at things or how you make up stories about events in your life and how you do that habitually. If you could stop choosing to make your golf game a stressful thing, just like you do on the range or maybe in a fun practice round, then your unconscious mind will stop interfering and let you play the game like you do in your lessons and practice. Now for some people this isn't such an easy thing, but I have worked with all types of people and everyone has the capacity to do this. See, the thing that I'm most proud about for the work I do is that when golfers or other athletes come to me with, with this problem and they learn how to do this, it transfers over to every other area of their life and they reduce their stress coping mechanisms like drinking and smoking and overeating and, and they end up with more energy and, and a happier life. Not to mention, uh, whoops, sorry, their golf game gets better and their scores go down. My favorite golfer of all time, Gary Player said, you have two choices in everything. Yet it's amazing how many people choose between negative and miserable. Lesson four, it's an and world. The first step in this process is to and everything on the golf course, and in your life. 
Now, what do I mean by that? Well, whenever you're feeling stress of any kind, you tell yourself something like this. Hmm, well, I'm feeling nervous, tense, anxious, and I'm going to sink this putt. If you're at home or work and maybe you're angry about something. Wow, I'm angry. I'm really angry. I'm going to be angry for a little while. And I'm going to continue to be productive and mature and an adult. Too many of us think, like on the golf course, that if you're nervous, tense, or feeling fear, that, that you can't play well. No. Well, you sure can if you don't think you can. Do you remember Annika Sorenstam playing in the Colonial against the men in 2003? She said that was the most pressure she's ever felt in her life on that first tee. And what does she end up doing? She rips it right down the middle. Now, in an interview later on, she said, I suppose I naturally realized the significance of the week and the buzz surrounding the tournament. And I just allowed my emotions to flow. This is what and world means. You just go with it and think that you can feel like that and perform well, just like Annika. I'm gonna challenge you to do this in your daily life and at the course this week and see what happens. The great thing about what you'll learn from me is that you can work on this issue and, and, and the mental game, not only in the course, but off the course in any time. When you're faced with a putt that makes you nervous, keep telling yourself, I'm nervous and I'm sinking this putt while I'm nervous. Stop fighting it and go with it. That reduces a big part of the stress right there because you stop being nervous or fearful about being nervous. <laughs> you get it? Fear. All of the top pros get nervous, especially down the stretch on Sundays. And they can close out tournaments while nervous. This, take, this technique all by itself takes care of 20 to 50% of that stress you're creating and allows your unconscious mind to let you play golf the way you know how. Work the and world technique everywhere. A great exercise to make this a lifetime habit is to use the word and in sentences, replacing the word but and or, even if it sometimes doesn't make sense. This will do wonders for your unconscious mind. I want you to comment below or ask me questions about these lessons here today. Geez, I could have charged $50 for this free training video alone. You now know the secret that even big time pro golfers and their swing coaches are clueless about. In the next follow up training video, I'm going to teach you the four strategies to being able to make program changes at the unconscious level so that you can stop the nervousness from showing up in the first place. Put your email in the box below to get a notice for the next video and a free gift with it. I'm Craig Sigal, and your swing is good enough to go low.